Okay, so for today's lesson, what we're going to be looking at is uh, we are covering RNA, which is the ribonucleic acids. Now, if you remember, DNA nucleotides are monomers, and when they are joined together, they make the polymer known as DNA. All right. So um, it's the same for RNAs. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is RNA nucleotides, which are monomers. So let's look at RNA nucleotides. RNA nucleotides um, over here, if you remember, the pentose sugar is called ribosugar, where at carbon number two, they have the OH groups. And there are four types of bases in RNA nucleotides, adenine, guanine, cytosine, or uracil. They don't have thymine. And they also have the phosphate groups. Each of them have the phosphate groups, which have labeled in green. So RNA nucleotides, when they are joined together, they will become the polymer known as RNA, ribonucleic acids. It's as simple as that. So a molecule of RNA is usually a single-stranded nucleic acid made up of RNA nucleotides, and the RNA nucleotides are joined together by phosphodiester bonds, which I've labeled over there for you. Now, what we have to look at is the three types of RNA that can exist. The first type of RNA that can exist is known as the messenger RNA, also known as the mRNA. In the exam, you can just use the word mRNA. It's fine. Small m, yeah, by the way. Small m and uppercase RNAs. Um, you don't have to write out the whole entire sentence. Uh, you don't have to write out the whole messenger RNA. That's fine. And just like the DNA, they do have some similarities in which they have the 5' prime to 3', prime, with the exception that RNA is single-stranded, DNA is double-stranded, and the, nucle the RNA nucleotides are joined together by phosphodiester bonds. Generally speaking, messenger RNAs are linear-shaped, and here's where it becomes important. Every triplet or three bases on the mRNA are referred to as something called as a codon. Okay? Now, what do I mean by that? Let's just draw it out again. As you can see here, I'm highlighting every three bases on the mRNA, and each of the triplet base refers to as one codon. Now, why is this important? We will talk about, we will explain that later. But what we have to know now is every three bases on the mRNA equals to one codon. That's basically it. The number of codons can be variable in the mRNA. Uh, in this case, the mRNA has six codons because it has 18 bases in total. So, as a question, if an mRNA has 210 nucleotides, which is 210 bases then, how many codons are there? Well, one codon equals to three bases, so 210 bases divided by three will equal to 70 codons. That's just basically it. Now, the second type of RNA that we're going to be looking at is something called transfer RNA. Now, if we were to draw out the linear shape of transfer RNA, you will notice something very interesting. It looks quite similar to mRNA. But at the three prime end, which I've highlighted, the bases are fixed. The bases are C, C, and A. Now, some students may uh, be wondering, do I need to memorize that? Um, I don't think you have to actually memorize that. If you want to, go for it. But that is not the important part. I mean, that's not the important part of the transfer RNA. So the difference between mRNA and tRNA is the fact that the transfer RNA can fold within itself. Okay, And what do I mean by that? The change is basically folds and forms a kind of 3D structure. You can still see the CCA. All right. If you notice, I'm also highlighting a green color area, three, three bases in the green color area. I'll explain why that is so. Now, this three-dimensional shape is quite confusing. So what we do is we like to represent tRNAs in a two-dimensional drawing. And that two-dimensional drawing is the one that you'll often see in the textbook. Five prime and three prime, still made up of a single chain, right? 
and you can still see the base CCA at the end of the 3 prime, and we will call this shape the clover shape. Why is it a clover? Because it looks a bit like a four-leaf clover, right? Which is, a which is a particular type of plant. It's a very unique leaf. So the part where I've highlighted in green are referred to as something called anticodons. Now, in mRNA, they can have many codons, but in tRNA, it only has one anticodon. Now, some students will be like, hey, but there are so many other bases you did not highlight. I don't care. Okay, in tRNA, they only have one anticodon, which is that very particular specific triplet base that I've highlighted in green. Okay, and I've also labeled it that for you. So that is important to know, and the, their significance will be uh, important later. And another very important thing to also know about tRNAs are they can fold within themselves by forming hydrogen bonds. So if I zoom in into this tRNA, and if I put base C on one side, the other side, it forms a complementary base pairing with guanine, okay, within its own chain, by the way and it has three hydrogen bonds. If one side has adenine, the other side has uracil. So just like polypeptide chains can fold within themselves, our tRNAs can also fold within themselves as well. So if CGA is on one side, GCU is on the other side, and if UUG is on one side, AAC is on the other side, and they form hydrogen bonds. Now, another very important thing to also know is at the three prime end where the base CCA is located, they will, the tRNA will attach to a specific amino acid. More to be elaborated on that later, but for now, this is just what you have to know about the structure of the tRNA molecule. I will not talk about the functions yet. And last but not least, the third type of RNA is referred to as ribosomal RNA. Still a single chain made up of RNA nucleotides joined together by phosphodiester bonds, and their function is very simple. You have one rRNA, which is the longer one, and another rRNA at the bottom, which is the shorter one. They both coil within themselves and form a 3D structure, add together some proteins, and what do you get? You get a ribosome. Because if you remember, when we looked at chapter 1 and when we described the structure of the ribosome, the ribosome is actually made up of rRNAs and proteins joined together. And the ribosome has two parts, a small subunit and a large subunit. The large subunit is made up of a longer rRNA and the shorter ribosome is made up of, uh, sorry, the smaller subunit is made up of the uh, shorter rRNA and some proteins as well. So if a question were to ask you, what is the ribosome made out of? You just have to say rRNAs and some proteins. Do you have to know the names of the proteins? No, you don't have to. That's basically it.